We begin with Cascade County's first death related to coronavirus. That brings the state's total to nine deaths. Cascade County health officials say the death occurred in a woman over the age of 65 with underlying health conditions. This morning, the state reported the number of cases is now at 422. It's an increase of seven cases since yesterday. Three of those in Toole County, one of the hardest hit areas of the state. Toole County saw its fourth, fourth death from coronavirus on Thursday. Statewide, 21 people are currently hospitalized with COVID-19. Governor Bullock announced today Montana's intentions to roll out a phased reopening of the state after the stay at home order expires next Friday. The gradual process will be based on guidance of the Montana COVID-19 task force and other health experts. Some of the factors that will be taken into account include a sustained reduction in new cases for 14 days, hospitals handling patients and that the state can meet testing needs. The governor recognized that Montanans are hurting financially right now and the state needs to be reopened to help alleviate that. However, Bullock says reopening has to be done in a responsible and safe manner or Montana could end up in a worse place because of the virus. We all have to have hope that in some ways we'll become stronger as a result of all of this and be ready to uh, not just get our economy running again, but our communities running again. And the state will reveal a more detailed version of how Montana will reopen sometime next week. Following other states' leads, protesters are planning to demonstrate against lockdowns and closures at the Montana Capitol building this Sunday. The state is not issuing Capitol Complex events permits at this time, so the protesters are planning to walk around the Capitol on the sidewalk. Helena Police met with the organizers of the rally yesterday to discuss what they had planned and what is expected of protesters in regards to social distancing and safety. Organizers told police they plan to follow social distancing orders and intend to be respectful to residents living in the area. Police Chief Steve Hagan asked that anyone attending this rally be respectful of others and differing opinions. Everybody involved is a little bit anxious and just show some respect. The, the only time we're going to um, be involved is if uh, it becomes a dangerous situation or they're um, violating that, that social distancing. We'll go and give them the warning like we would with any other group of people. There are changes that are now coming to Great Falls Public Schools. On the K through 6 grade side, they're now implementing a different grading system. Now they're using a scale ranging from good, satisfactory, or needs improvement. The, the district tells us that they'll be looking at the child's progress for the entire year, not just the last couple of months. We, it is not our intent to hold kids harmless because of a hiccup in the fourth quarter due to um, the coronavirus. It's about what we know about that child for the first three quarters, and we know so much about all of our kids. This is just going to be a blip on the radar, I hope, moving forward. Middle school and high schools are a little bit different. They're implementing a pass-fail system for the remainder of the school year. The district acknowledges that distance learning is challenging and unique. Students and schools have a shared responsibility right now, but the district feels students should not be held accountable for their inability to get help. Well, as aid comes to both consumers and small businesses in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, MTN's Sam Hoyle shows us how the state government and general public can help to stimulate the economy. With COVID-19 stimulus checks on the way, it's a welcome sight to those who have lost a substantial part of their income or for those who are uncertain what the future holds. And as Governor Bullock's Coronavirus Relief Fund Task Force has been unveiled, the real work is just getting started. Colin Davis, owner of Chico Hot Springs and member of the task force, said the task force's job isn't about delegating who gets what, but rather how to upright Montana's economy as a whole. We're going to come out of this with greater debt, right? which, is, which is not a win-win, right? So how do, we, how do we shore up these businesses and get money to them that will help them, that will fairly help them get back in business, open their doors, help their employees? And that's a really, that's, that is the question, that is our charge. 
From small business owners to state representatives to high-ranking member of banks, the task force is trying to figure out the best way to get Montana back on its feet. And Scott Brown, task force member and owner of the base camp, said one way for consumers who are in a position to do so is simple, but easier said than done. Shopping at, uh, at local businesses, and uh, that's right now, you can't. You can't. Local retailers across the state have closed their doors for the time being, and even though 13,000 local businesses got a piece of the $1.4 billion from the Paycheck Protection Program, the task force now has $1.25 billion to work with as they look to get Montana's economy back on its feet. And Davis said the goal isn't just to duplicate what's already been done. We're all in this together, right? We're Everybody's suffering, and the whole point is to get through this as rapidly and as safely as possible so we can really open these businesses back up and keep them open, not open them up to shut them back down again. In Helena, Sam Hoyle, MTN News. The Coronavirus Relief Fund Task Force will meet three times a week for the next two weeks as they discuss the best way to spend the $1.25 billion. Well, after a few chilly days, our Storm Tracker weather team is finally tracking some warmer weather today. Brandon joins us now and Brandon, we're enjoying that much nicer weather. Yeah, absolutely. Better than yesterday in almost every way. Nearly 20 degrees warmer than we were at this time yesterday and not just in Great Falls, but across the board. The only spot that's not really significantly warmer is Cutbank and they're still about 10 degrees warmer than yesterday. You look off to the east, temperatures running as high as 23 degrees warmer in places like Jordan. Looking at the actual temperatures, it's 65 in both Jordan and Glasgow right now, 64 in uh, Malta, 58 here in Great Falls, very comfortable and still, even though it's uh, not a huge change in Cutbank, they're at 55 degrees. So everyone's got nice, comfortable temperatures, but most of us also have some pretty strong winds that we're contending with, especially places like Cutbank and Great Falls. We've seen wind gusts as high as about 60 miles per hour, and almost everybody has seen at least 30 mile per hour wind gusts through the day today. So it has been breezy. The good news, those winds are going to start to die down. We're already starting to see that trend a little bit by 7 p.m. West wind at 14, under 10 miles per hour by 8 p.m. Skies are still relatively clear. It's going to be actually a pretty nice evening. Tomorrow, though, not looking quite as nice, and we'll have more on that later in the show. Thanks, Brandon. Still to come on your 530 News, the race. The primary contest for Montana State Auditor features a pair of lawyers. We'll meet them right after this. Powered by the Montana Television Network, the 530 News continues on KRTV, Montana's news leader. Welcome back. We're continuing to follow the situation with coronavirus in Tool County. It's home to less than 6,000 people in northern Montana. They've already faced four deaths and 29 total cases, making them the county in, this, in Montana with the highest case number to population ratio. Those ca cases have taken a toll on the county and the businesses caught off guard by its spread. That's why public officials are showing their community and businesses support with a plan called Tool County Forward, a monetary aid program that will allow businesses hurt by COVID-19 to financially recoup. MTN's Lindsay Hyatt met with program leaders today to find out when Toole County Forward will be moving forward. Despite being one of the regions COVID-19's hit the hardest, Toole County isn't letting coronavirus affect their ability to lead. We have to show a, a presence in our community and a sense of calm. Shelby yeah. officials decided to face the virus that's taken hold of the community and its businesses head on. CPA Dwayne Iverson saw that businesses were in bad shape. Downtown right now, you can shoot a bullet and not hit anything. You know, there's no cars, and I figured if we don't do something, that's what this is going to look like in the future. So he worked with Shelby officials to help businesses turn their lights back on. The whole plan, I guess, was spearheaded by our uh, Dwayne Iverson CPA. And he was concerned about uh, some of our small retail businesses here in Shelby and their ability to have working capital to restart. Iverson joined forces with the city's mayor, finance officer, and community development director to find funds for businesses that were hardest hit. If we can get it implemented quick enough at when they start reopening here, I think we can make them strong enough that we can make it successful. The team has come up with $75,000 really really from the city alone, up. along with $50,000 from private businesses. Plus, they've applied for support from the state That's and a, other yeah, agencies to match the $75,000 the city is providing. Since the city funds are readily available, that money can be distributed right away. 
in all honesty, we could get them checks within a week after reviewing their applications and hopefully get them the ability to reopen their doors, purchase inventory, get the payroll started, and get their doors open. The city of Shelby even sent out preliminary letters encouraging businesses in need to apply. Over 50 letters have already been sent, letting businesses know that help is on the way. In Shelby, Lindsay Hyatt, MTN News. And the city of Shelby hopes to have applications for financial support next Tuesday. Businesses in all of Toole County are eligible. You can head to our website for more information. Well, three weeks from today, absentee ballots will be mailed to all registered voters in Montana for the June 2nd primary election, the state's first all mail-in ballot statewide election. MTN News is producing a series of stories on the contested primaries for statewide offices. Today, MTN Chief Political Reporter Mike Dennison examines the two-man race in the Democratic primary for state auditor, which is the office that regulates insurance and investment industry in Montana. Until a few weeks ago, this primary looked like it would be uncontested, with State Representative and Missoula Attorney Shane Morjo the only Democrat running for state auditor. I started campaigning about 10 months ago, and, and I think nowadays it, it takes that type of effort to, to win these seats. Is, is it takes commitment. But on the day before the candidate filing deadline, Helena Lawyer and Democrat Mike Windsor also got into the race. Windsor worked as a lawyer and investigator for Democratic state auditors for 13 years and told MTN News that his experience as a consumer advocate makes him the right person for the job. My Republican opponents are all running on a platform, a pro-business platform. The statutory mission of the state auditor's office is to protect insurance consumers and to pre protect Montana investors. The state auditor's seat is open this year because Republican incumbent Matt Rosendale is running for the U.S. House. The winner of this Democratic primary will take on whoever wins the three-way Republican primary and Libertarian Roger Roots. Windsor says he worked with Dateline NBC to take down a junk insurance scam and recovered $800,000 in restitution for its Montana victims, including those featured in the show. We pay our premiums. We expect our claims to be paid. We invest. We expect those deals to be honored. You know, we need a consumer advocate and we need a, an experienced consumer advocate. Morjo is a member of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes and grew up near Ronan. He says he knows firsthand the financial struggles that Montana families face and that he'd be a strong advocate for those who need insurance across the urban and rural landscapes of the state. You know, I grew up in a community where people work their butts off and, you know, they still struggle to afford things like health care and health insurance. And I see this job as being an opportunity to protect everybody in the state of Montana. I don't care what your political affiliation is. So who's the best Democrat to take on the GOP nominee for a state auditor, whoever that may be? That's what primary voters get to decide starting just three weeks from now. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Well, we are tracking a cool down to start the weekend, but by the time we leave the weekend, things are going to be much warmer. We'll just break that down after the break. At break now, here's your storm tracker weather forecast with meteorologist Brandon Michaels. Definitely not a bad day today. Still a little bit of blue sky out there, but uh, we've definitely seen some clouds roll in. The temperature is very comfortable. It's 58 right now here in Great Falls. This is a little bit less comfortable. It's been a pretty windy day. We've seen wind gusts uh, as high as 40 miles per hour, and they're currently gusting at about 33. We're going to get back to the cloud cover, though, because we have seen that kind of build through the afternoon. Uh, early afternoon hours were really nice and sunny, but we're seeing a little bit of moisture flowing in from Canada. Even a couple of showers already showing up, mainly right along the international border, and that's going to be the trend as we have through the forecast. We're going to be seeing more of that moisture and also a nice cool down as a cooler air mass sinks down from Canada. We've got this cold front right here. Future track is showing that uh, just to the south of Haver by about midnight, but really taking its time to progress off to the south. So it's going to be the early morning hours that, uh, or rather the early to mid morning that we see that kind of moving through Great Falls. Behind that front, we've got a little bit of rain. We've got a little bit of snow, kind of a wintry mix expected uh, as that front moves through. That lingers into the afternoon hours. And then things kind of clear out for us as we head into the night with most of the snow then kind of to our south, but still places like Mar County, Judith Basin, even around the Lewistown area, probably still seeing uh, a good amount of snowfall at that point. We're going to start off with some clouds for our Sunday, but then by Sunday afternoon, we're going to get into some more clearing and a good amount of sunshine. So we do track a not very nice day for Saturday, 
but Sunday looks significantly nicer and not huge impacts from this little cold front that's moving through. I think the only place uh, at lower elevation that might have a chance for getting over an inch would be Lewistown, and I'm not even completely sold on that. In general, it's going to be the higher elevations that are going to pick up some snow. We only have one winter weather advisory in effect, and that's kind of right along the continental divide for parts of uh, Pond Ray and also Glacier County, three to five inches for Marias Pass. A little bit higher uh, elevations are going to see a little bit higher snow totals as well, but not huge impacts from this cold front moving in. In fact, the most notable thing is going to be the drop in our temperatures, and that's not going to be a factor tonight. 36 in Harlem and Haver, and also 36 for Fort Benton, 32 in Cunbank, and 38 degrees for the overnight low temperature in Jordan. Through the day tomorrow, not much of a warm up. We see temperatures kind of flatten out through the afternoon. Again, we get that cold front moving in fairly early, and then we have a hard time warming up behind that front. We've got a lot of clouds in play, and we've also got uh, just a cooler air mass that's moving in with those showers. So tomorrow's high temperatures, not all that impressive. 47 for Harlem, 43 in Fort Benton, 38 in Cutbank, 49 in Glasgow, and 51. Some plots, some spots like Wolf Point. A little bit warmer. Winds not a factor this weekend. We're looking at 10 to 20 mile, mile per hour wind gusts in general, mainly out of the north, and that's going to be once that cold front passes through. For our Sunday, the wind's really not a huge deal either. Again, 10 to 20 miles per hour, so maybe a noticeable breeze, but not nearly as windy as it was today. So the winds will be dying down. Temperatures are going to be dying down for tomorrow too, but by Sunday, they're going to come. Uh, increasing once again 59 for Fort Benton 52 and guys are on Sunday 57 in Chester 59 in Malta and 59 in Glasgow some spots pretty close to 60 degrees by Sunday and I think almost everybody's going to be in the 60s by next week let's go through the seven day forecast now again pretty big increase between Saturday and Sunday and then another pretty big increase between Sunday and Monday Monday looking like an excellent day sunny 65 not too much wind we do see those winds pick up a little bit on Tuesday but still really nice sunny and 67 wouldn't rule out some isolated 70 degree readings on Tuesday. A little bit more cloud cover by Wednesday. Our temperature goes down a little bit, and then we do track some chances for some showers towards the end of the forecast. Shannon. All right, thanks, Brandon. Some big names join a game of virtual catch in honor of a Great Falls boy. We'll join in on the action next. Powered by the Montana Television Network. The 530 News continues on KRTV, Montana's news leader. Thanks for staying with us. In March, we showed you how one Great Falls boy with a compromised immune system started a game of virtual catch to stay connected with people around the state. Well, the game didn't stop there, and a few big names have joined in. Take a look. Joy, hit me. I'm open. Nice pass. Go deep. Hi, Coach Stick. Thanks for throwing me the ball. And thanks for being my buddy for all the years. Nice throw, Troy. Looks like you're coming for Blake Thielen's job. Go deep. Hi, Coach. Thanks for playing. Say hi to my buddy Blake. Watch this. Hey, Troy. It's former Denver Broncos linebacker Carl Mecklenburg. Hey, you take care of yourself. Wash your hands and be safe. Be safe. Hi, Mecklenburg. Do you think you can tackle my buddy, Wes Wesson? What's up, Troy? It's Sugar Sean, UFC future champion, undefeated, 11 and 0. Catch. Hi, Troy. I'm Roxanne Modafferi. I fight in the UFC. I'm an MMA fighter. Catch. Nice throw, Troy. Go lights. Nice. Hi, coach. Thanks for all you do for me. Thanks for don't know your butt. Thanks for passing me the ball. Hi, Beast. Thanks for blowing me the ball and thanks for seeing me in the hospital. You're not alone in this fight. I got your back. Here you go, Troy. Catch, Troy. Go deep, Troy. Troy. Good fall. See you soon, my family. Hey, Troy. Anthony Knockout over with the Knockout Sports. Hope you're doing well, man. Great toss and right back at you. What's up, Troy? Roll digs, and as always, go bison. Good fall, Turkey. Go diggers. 
Now the goal is to get Russell Wilson to join in. Troy was visited by the Seahawks quarterback when he was treated at Seattle Children's Hospital back in 2017. We're back with some new ways to respond to people on social media during this time of coronavirus. Next. Welcome back. Our evening, or excuse me, our weekend isn't starting out the best. You can tell it's Friday for me. Some showers on Saturday, but nice and sunny and a little bit warmer on Sunday. It is Friday indeed. We're all there mentally. All right, finally, since you can't physically hug your friends right now, Facebook is making it a little bit easier to do it virtually. They've added a hug emoji as one of the reactions for posts and pictures in the Messenger app. They're also Adding a vibrating heart, a Facebook spokesperson says that this is for when a regular heart just doesn't feel like enough. The new reactions are in response to coronavirus. They say people need compassion and support now more than ever, and this was their small way to do it. I haven't noticed it yet. I guess I'll have to look for it. We'll see you later.